Oh, let's get everybody. It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. It appears yesterday night um, in the Manchester and 7th Avenue area of Inglewood, a man was shot and killed. His age was 33 years old, and we know him as rapper Slim 400. Now, from what I can find out, he was a Compton bass rapper. Uh, however, it was killed in Inglewood. And it seems that he was an aspiring rapper. He had some songs with Young Dolph and, like, you know, YG and, you know, other, you know, blood related rappers or Pyre related rappers. Uh, but it, it appears that he has some personal problems with, with some entity or, or group of people from times past. And in 2019, he was shot eight or nine times in Compton, okay? Now, what people are seeing right now, from what I can gather on the internet, is that, you know, he was killed, um, some people are saying, by the Rolling 60s. A uh, Rolling 60s has a real big beef with Inglewood family, and it would make sense why he is in Inglewood family, because they're also a Pyro set. Um, but I do have a video from a, a, a older brother who has some knowledge about the situation. I'm going to play that video right now, and then I'm going to come back and give my commentary. Hey, look, man, uh, I'm putting this out there. It's too much information, but I'm putting it out there anyway. 60s did not kill. 60s did not kill Slim 400. Um, yeah, there's a war going on. 60s and IF, they, they getting down right now. Uh, motherfuckers trying to stop it. But right now, um, people are saying he was killed in the 60s. The 60s did it, this and that. And, uh, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. I, I know people around there. Um, there's witnesses and they got camera. It wasn't the 60s. It wasn't who y'all think it was, man. It's um something personal with this guy, man. Slim 400 died on some personal stuff that he had going on. So not to put his business out there, you know, not to mess up the investigation the police is doing. But I want y'all to know this ain't the war between the 60s and the family. This that had nothing to do with Slim. So um, I want y'all to rest ashore, you know, relax, but... Uh, you know, shit. it wasn't that. So everybody who thinking that the 60s did it and it happened in the 60s, it didn't happen like that. It just didn't, man. And and shit, I just woke up, went around there and looked and people started calling me and telling me, you know, the stuff that was going on. So, man, get up off the 60s on this one, man. They they, they got issues. They got shit to deal with, with, with whatever the war is, but this ain't the war. This ain't it. So... Just making that clear, man. This ain't the Rolling 60s and Englewood family beef. They got their own beef, and Slim 400 ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, rest in peace, Slim 400. Okay, so you heard what, what the what the OG had to say, that although the Englewood family and Rolling 60s, which they've always been enemies, uh, even when I lived in L.A., this is not the case. This has something to do with some personal situation stuff. And most likely, it could have been the people that shot him in 2019 are the ones that shot him now. Um, but I want to kind of talk about this from the outside looking in. I'm not a, a street dude. I, I grew up in uh, Compton. I grew up in Sacramento. Um, you know, I've, I've been to double casket funerals. I've seen shootouts. I've seen all kind of crazy stuff. But one thing I'm not is a street dude. And one thing that I've never had to try to establish for myself is what is a street credibility or a street reputation and what a lot of these rappers who are coming out the gate i'm noticing at least you know more often now is you know they're, 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 especially on the west coast they're, they're coming out with the tradition of gangster rap tradition of doing things in the street establishing street credibility and they're having um one foot in the entertainment game in one foot in the real shit, you know, whether it's gangs, whether it's drugs, whether it's beef, 
all right? Uh, kind of one foot in, one foot out. Some people could even say, you know, that was one criticism of Nipsey Hussle. You know, he was still somehow involved in the Rolling Sixes, although his talents were taking him other places. I can't necessarily comment on that, but what I will say um, with this for you guys, your street credibility, for the most part, is gonna land you in two places. You're gonna either die or you're going to jail. That's where it's gonna lead you. And for those guys who don't believe it, just look at the generation before us. Look at the generation before them. And my heart goes out to the family and I know that the hip hop world, especially on the West Coast, um, is distraught right now. But I want this to um, sort of wake up our people as, 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 as African Americans that, you know, we've had so many people that fight for our rights and do so much for us as a community of people to have to die like this. Which really, if we could find out why he was shot, it probably is not over something that's big. It's something that probably could have been you know, either talked out or, um, or resolved. Okay? That's what it could have been. But because, you know, the black male ego is so fragile, because the black male ego won't allow to conflict, you know, re resolve things because of, you know, said ego and, 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 and street credibility and all this other stuff, this is how a lot of our guys die. And for many black men, this is totally okay. There are a lot of black men who are okay dying like this. They know they're going to die like this. And all they're living for is street credibility. And I'm going to tell you, as a guy that somebody will call as a square, if I'm going to have any kind of credibility, let it be a FICO credibility. Right? Let it be a clean bill of health credibility. You know? Let it be, you know, in the last... You know, 20 years, you ain't got no missed payments on your account credibility. Let it be that. Let it be something that benefits me and my people, benefits me and, and the community we come from. And this kind of change of thinking is going to be hard for us to get past because so many guys do see the nice life. They do see, you know, um, how, how the crowd reacts to them. But, you know, what what also isn't glamorized is when you're, when you're suffering with, with gunshots because... Some person wants to take your life for nothing because either they're jealous, either because something you said for a stupid beef or whatever the case is, and then you die when you're 33 or 30 or 20 something, or sometimes even 15 or 14. And at, and at some point, you know, as a group of black men, um, we're gonna have to let that street credibility thing go. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some resources. It's going to take some working together. But we need to have credibility for innovating, doing things that help our people stay ahead. Because gang banging, as much as I know some people do it, I know it's a culture for some, but it's only going to lead you in a certain places. Even if you do make a lot of money, drug dealing, you know, pimping, whatever you do, you know, at some point, if they catch you and they will, you're not going to be able to keep it no way. You're going to end up being 56 years old talking about you want to start a community involvement program, try to save the youth. And then they ain't going to want to listen to you and they go back and do the same thing you was doing. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I really appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe at the bell. Check out the first cut at the top. And as you know, the buffoon remains at all-time high. I'm out.